There is a technology that stands as a cornerstone technology for the U.S. Navy, enabling continuous maritime operations. This vital process allows naval vessels to receive fuel, ammunition, and supplies while at sea, enhancing fleet endurance and strategic capabilities. This technique is called underway replenishment, or UNREP. So, how does this cutting-edge technology help the U.S. Navy to always be operational? Let's find out. Underway replenishment, or the UNREP, is like the superhero sidekick of naval operations. It's the unsung hero that keeps warships fueled, armed, and ready for action, even when they're far from home ports. This nifty technique allows ships to refuel and restock while cruising through the open seas, ensuring they can stay on duty for extended periods without having to dash back to a friendly harbor. But before we move into the details of this technology, let's see how things were done in the past. Once upon a time, coaling stations were the go-to spots for refueling ships. The Royal Navy, being the strategic genius it was, had a sprawling network of these stations, backed by the world's largest fleet of colliers, ships designed for carrying coal. This setup gave them the power to flex their naval muscles globally. However, it came with its share of issues. These coaling stations were vulnerable to attacks or disruptions, and using them created a predictable route in that enemies could exploit. Efforts to refuel at sea began as early as 1870, but progress was turtle-paced. But picture this, HMS Captain, part of the Channel Squadron, getting coal at a rate of 5 tons per hour in 1870. It was like watching paint dry, too slow to be practical, and only doable in calm weather to keep neighboring ships from drifting apart. In 1883, Lieutenant Robert Lowry had a light bulb moment. He dreamt of a system where ships could transfer at least 20 tons of stuff per hour while sailing at a leisurely five knots. But how did he execute this idea? Use watertight coal carriers hanging from a cable between two ships. Admiralty, however, said, no, thanks. But this rejection lit a fire and more than 20 similar proposals flooded the Royal Navy between 1888 and 1890. The tricky part was maintaining a constant distance between two moving ships. French experiments in 1898 using a temporary transporter gave a glimpse of hope. They managed to provision two warships with 200 tons of coal at six knots. Across the pond, the U.S. Navy, lacking a massive collier fleet, dabbled in experiments in 1899. Spencer Miller and the Lidgerwood Manufacturing Company of New York joined forces creating a system with a cable kept taut between two ships equipped with a quick-release hook. The first test involved the Collier, Marcellus, and the battleship Massachusetts. In 1906, the Royal Navy ran tests with the oiler Petroleum and the battleship Victorious, towing the oiler 600 feet astern of the battleship. The trial involved 27 lengths of hose connected between the ships proving that a transfer rate of 115 tons per hour was achievable at speeds up to 12 knots. This success led to the construction of the Euler Burma in 1911, designed to supply destroyers with oil at sea. While the concept worked, the Royal Navy preferred to stick to refueling alongside in harbor until the world was hit by World War II. World War I brought challenges but also innovation. In 1916, Chester Nimitz, serving on the USS Maumee, crafted a riding a beam refueling system while stationed in Cuba. This ingenious system featured ship booms supporting rubber hoses between the oiler and the receiving destroyer. USS Maumee, assigned to refuel destroyers heading to Britain, became the trailblazer. Positioned about 300 miles south of Greenland, it transferred fuel to 34 destroyers over three months, setting the stage for mobile logistic support and allowing fleets to stay at sea for longer periods. The interwar period saw efforts to figure out how to refuel larger warships effectively. In the 1950s and 1960s, the U.S. Navy introduced multi-product supply ships capable of delivering fuel, ammunition, and stores while underway. Enter the standard tensioned replenishment alongside method or stream, a game-changing method, ensuring smooth transfers with a tensioned high line between ships. Various rigging methods, like spanwire rig, by close-in rig and span line rig added to the versatility. The 21st century brings new challenges and opportunities. The electric stream or e-stream system, designed to meet the increased sortie generation rates for modern aircraft carriers, reflects the Navy's commitment to stay tech savvy. E-stream, with its heavy capacity design, 
replaces hydrostatic transmissions with commercial off-the-shelf variable frequency drives and a programmable logic control system. This technological leap enhances reliability, compactness, ease of use, and maintenance while preserving compatibility with existing stream receiving stations. But what about the early visionaries and rejected proposals? Lieutenant Robert Lowry's 1883 dream of large-scale underway replenishment has evolved into a global reality. The rejected concept of transferring tons of supplies at sea, once considered impractical, has become a cornerstone of naval logistics. As naval powers adopted underway replenishment, it became a cornerstone of global naval strategy. Allied contributions during times of conflict showcased the collaborative nature of UNREP. In World War II, the British and Americans shared expertise and refined techniques to ensure fleets remained operational for extended periods. This collaboration not only improved individual nations' capabilities, but also strengthened the fabric of naval alliances. The involvement of civilian mariners in underway replenishment added a new dimension. Learning from British practices, the U.S. Navy gradually shifted to employing civilian mariners for UNREP operations. This transition, marked by the introduction of ships like the USNS Henry J. Kaiser in 1987, highlighted the importance of adapting UNREP to changing naval dynamics. Civilian-operated replenishment vessels became a testament to innovation and efficiency. Despite decades of refinement, underway replenishment remains a complex and challenging operation. From the early struggles with coal transfer to the precision required for modern liquid fuel and cargo delivery, UNREP demands constant adaptation. The E-Stream system, with its enhanced capabilities, represents the Navy's commitment to staying ahead of evolving requirements. Looking ahead, the challenges encompass a spectrum of delivery issues. E-Stream's versatility allows for handling heavy loads required by aircraft carriers while meeting the ammunition and store demands of smaller vessels like littoral combat ships and future frigates. The system's programmable nature ensures adaptability, a crucial factor in navigating diverse operational scenarios. Vertical replenishment by helicopters remains an option. But E-Stream provides the Navy with a comprehensive system, reducing reliance on aircraft and enhancing operational flexibility. The evolving landscape of naval operations demands solutions that can address diverse emission profiles, and E-Stream emerges as a system designed for the 21st century. The story of underway replenishment is a saga of innovation, collaboration, and adaptation. From the early dreams of visionaries like Lieutenant Robert Lowry to the global adoption of UNREP as a strategic necessity, the naval landscape has transformed significantly. The challenges faced in transferring coal at a sluggish pace have given way to advanced systems like E-Stream, symbolizing the relentless pursuit of efficiency and effectiveness. As naval powers continue to navigate an ever-evolving geopolitical landscape, the importance of underway replenishment remains paramount. It's not just about refueling and resupplying, it's about maintaining a continuous and formidable naval presence. The UNREP techniques that evolved from precarious experiments to standardized procedures exemplify the spirit of naval excellence. In this tale of naval logistics, every innovation, every rejected proposal, and every trial at sea has contributed to the evolution of underway replenishment. As the seas become theaters of strategic influence, the ability to sustain naval forces far from home ports becomes a defining factor. Underway replenishment stands as a testament to human ingenuity and determination, ensuring that naval power can project itself across the vast expanse of the world's oceans, always ready for the next mission on the horizon. But don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to watch more exciting videos like this.